Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, dear Jesus, your dear ch- your children are now wanting to pray right now. They are everywhere, and they are listening, they are watching, they are sharing these videos, their loved ones, their friends, and they seek healing from you, Jesus. They seek your mercy, they seek your consolation, they seek your love, because if you don't console, console us, we'll console us. If you don't love us, Jesus, we'll love us. If you don't show us your mercy, who's going to show us your mercy? And that's why we read in the book of Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 4, verse 16. Amen. But you can start from verse 14. But let us start from verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 14. But I'll start from verse 16. And it says, Let us have confidence then and approach God's throne where there is grace. There we will receive mercy and find grace to help us just when we need it. Have you heard about that? That let us have confidence then and approach God's throne where there is grace. Let us approach Jesus. is the embodiment of God's throne. Let us approach Jesus, his throne, where there is grace. Amen. Those who are saying the grace of the Lord, I need the grace of the Lord to do this. I need the grace of the Lord to do this. God says, confidently come to me and you shall receive that grace. That's why St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, that the grace of the Lord is sufficient for us. Next line says, there will be there, we will receive mercy and find the grace to help us just when we need it. We shall receive mercy there and find grace and it will help us when we shall need it. My dear brothers and sisters that are watching me, we need this grace, we need this mercy. And God has said, we confidently come to him. So now believe, begin to open your hands and open your heart to close your eyes. Maybe if you can't close your eyes, just look at Jesus of Divine Mercy, who is now before you, and look at him. Look at him, he's looking at you, he's looking at me. And not only is he looking at me, and he's not looking at you with the disdain. He's looking at you, inviting you, come, come. I made my first video clip. When I go to Chibeho at the Divine Mercy, at the Adoration Chapel, and I was telling you about Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. It is on my YouTube and on my Facebook, the first video clip, because these videos are following each other. And I would want you to watch them one by one, following each other. That's when you will be more blessed and healed. So the first video clip was Jesus asking us, come to me, all you who are tired of carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. So uh, Jesus is here. He's inviting me and you. Are you tired of carrying heavy loads? Are you tired of carrying heavy loads? Are you tired of carrying the, that burden of, job, of joblessness? Are you tired of carrying that burden of childlessness? Are you tired of carrying that burden of debts all the time? You are paying debts, you cannot settle. Are you tired of that burden of sickness in your body, of disease in your body? Are you tired of that burden of sin, falling in sin all the time? Are you tired of the burden of committing one sin after another? Are you tired of the burden of falling in the sins that you have repented and you have, you have gone for confession? Are you tired of the burden of your parents who don't love you, of your people who don't love you? Are you tired of your boyfriend who hurts you every day, who has broken your heart? Are you tired of the, the heartbreaks that you have gone through in life? Are you tired of people who seem not to care about your life? Are you tired of the people who backstab you? Are you tired of the people who talk ill about you, who slander against you? Are you tired of being greedy? Are you tired of being pride, proud? Are you tired of being lazy? Are you tired of the problems that are in your family? Are you tired? of the problems in your siblings? Are you tired of people who are not converted in your family? Are you tired of this world? Are you tired of the pandemic of coronavirus? Jesus is asking you and me right now, come to me with all your burdens. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7, cast all your worries to me. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7, cast all your worries to me for I care for you. So my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is here. He's asking you to bring all our burdens to him. What a burden are you carrying? Bring it to Jesus right now. What cross are you carrying that is heavy for you? Come and receive grace. Bible has said in, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, that let us come to the throne of grace and we shall receive grace and mercy that will help us in time of need. So any cross that you are carrying that is heavy for you, come and receive grace from the Lord. And he's willing to receive you into his heart. He's willing to heal you by his wounds. The Bible says that by his wounds we have been healed. So if you are sick in body, if you are sick in mind, 
if you are sick in the soul, may you receive the healing power of Jesus right now. Receive the healing power of Jesus right now. Receive the healing power of Jesus right now. Are you sick of HIV? Are you sick of diabetes? Are you sick of hypertension? Are you sick in your lungs? Are you sick in your bladder? Are you sick in your tubes? The ovaries are sick. The ovaries are sick. You have cysts. What are you sick of? Are you sick in your mind? Are you having conversions? Are you having epilepsy? Are you having problems in the joints? Are you having problems in the blood? In the bladder? In the gold bladder, in the appendix, in the appendix, you have appendicitis. Are you having problem in your anything in any of your tissues in your heart? What problem are you having? There is no problem that Jesus cannot heal. Remember the words of Jesus in Luke chapter 18, verse 27. Luke chapter 18, verse 27. Jesus says, What human beings cannot do, God can do. So, my dear brothers and sisters, what you have failed to do by your own power. What you have failed to do, maybe the doctors have failed to do it. May Jesus do it right now, and he's doing it right now. Just to believe that whatever you have failed to do, Jesus is doing it right now. Yes, tell Jesus as you pray with me right now, and tell Jesus, yes, tell Jesus, in Luke chapter 18, verse 27, what the human being cannot do, God can do. Tell Jesus that what I have failed to do, you can do right now. My Jesus of mercy, my Jesus of mercy, I have failed to come out of my sins, but by you, you can help me to come out of my sins. Jesus, Master, of mercy, King of mercy, I have failed to come out of this addiction. I have failed to come out of masturbation. I have failed to come out of abortion. I have failed to come out of adultery. I have failed to come out of fornication. I have failed to come out of greed. I have failed to come out of pride. I have failed to come out of laziness, of procrastination. I have failed to come out of debts. I have failed to come out of, of self-denial. I have failed to, I have failed to come out of, the, of being disparate, despair. I have failed to come out of isolation. I have failed to come out of my family challenges. I have failed to come out of my weaknesses. But Jesus, you are doing it right now. Pray with me, my dear brother and sister. Pray with me, my dear brother and sister. Tell Jesus of mercy is here with us. This is the holy place where I am standing right now. This is the holy ground that where we behold the presence of God. This is the holy ground where we behold the face of Christ. Bible has said, Psalms 34, verse 5, verse 6, and verse 7, all through. It says that look to the Lord and you will never blush with shame. Look to the Lord, set your eyes on God, and the shame that is on your face will go, and you will, have, will be radiant with joy. Have you been shameful? Have you been walking in shame of defeat? Have you been walking in shame of misfortunes? Have you been walking in shame of, in the fame of defeat, of misfortunes, of the shame of, of, of being rejected? By your parents, by your father, by your mother. The shame of being rejected by your boyfriend, by your fiancé. The shame of being rejected by the person who told you to prepare for your introduction, to prepare for your visitation, and then he turned around in the last minute. Have you gone through the shame of being broken-hearted? Have you been going through the shame of losing your job? So receive the healing power of Jesus right now. Receive Jesus now. Yes, he's receiving into his hands. He's receiving into his wounds. He's healing all your wounds right now. Second one... Peter chapter 2 verse 24 by his wounds you have been healed by his wounds you have been healed so be healed of every sickness in your body be healed of every sickness in your body whatever sickness it is it is mention it to Jesus tell Jesus heal me of HIV heal me of high blood pressure heal me of hypertension heal me of COVID-19 heal me Jesus of emotional pain heal me of, of past history that takes me back and always brings me down heal me of unbelief heal me of lack of faith heal me Lord of, of everything that is in me that is not from you. Jesus is healing you right now. Jesus is setting you free right now. Jesus is blessing your life right now. He is feeding you with his love. He is washing you right now with blood that flowed from his, his side of the body. You can see his blood is flowing from his side of the body. That blood was flowing not for anybody, but for you and me. It was not flowing for anybody, for you and me. May that blood come and wash your family. You are praying for that your family may be healed. There are many things that happen in your family and they are occurring every time. There is that occurrence every time. That means that there is a curse in your family. If bad things are happening all the time, people are dying almost every month, every year. If people are losing their jobs the moment they get them. If people are not married, everybody, everyone comes back home. Your daughter is not being married. If people are not getting jobs even when they are going to school. If there is, they mean there is a misfortune, there is a curse. But by the blood of Jesus, it is being washed away. Tell Jesus that by your blood, curses are being washed away from my family. Tell Jesus that by your blood, every curse that I have, that has come to me, Lord, through my disobedience, through the, by inheriting you, through, because of the sins 
of my ancestors. Lord, you are washing it away. The curses of marriage failure. The curses of childlessness. Many people have committed abortion in your family. And because of that, you cannot conceive even when you are married in church. Tell Jesus you are washing away the curse of childlessness. Because of the abortions that you committed in our family. Tell Jesus now he's healing you. He's healing many people. He's healing your families. He's setting everybody free. He's washing us all, including myself and my family and your family. He's washing everyone that you are praying for, that you are lifting up to him right now in his blood, in his water. My dear brothers and sisters, when, when this man came to pierce the heart of Jesus that I have told you about, he was called Longinus. When he came to pierce the heart of Jesus on the cross, tradition tells us that the moment he pierced the heart of Jesus, when the water and blood came, it came into his eyes because he had not expected it. And one of his eyes was blind, but immediately he received sight. Maybe you are blind. I don't know. Maybe you are, you are putting on spectacles because you cannot read anymore. You cannot walk anymore because of blindness. Maybe you have a spiritual blindness. I don't know. Maybe your family members are blind to reality. So ask the Lord. Let him wash their mind. Let him wash their eyes, the eyes of their hearts, the physical eyes. Let Jesus wash them in his holy blood. Let Jesus wash them in his holy water and they shall be restored to sight like Bartimaeus. They shall be restored to sight like Betremius. Remember the prayer of Betremius. Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Betremius said, Jesus must have mercy on me, a sinner. Cry to Jesus right now. Tell him, Jesus must have mercy on me, a sinner. This is Jesus of mercy. This is Jesus of divine mercy that has come to us. That you are watching right now, my dear brother and sister, who you are watching on, on YouTube, on Facebook, the people you are sharing with, the people you are praying for. Cry to Jesus. Jesus must have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus must have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus must have mercy on me, sinner. Thank you, Jesus, for healing us. Thank you, Jesus, for setting us free. Thank you, Jesus, for taking out all our burdens. Thank you, Jesus, for healing all the broken hearts. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for healing our minds, our bodies. Thank you, Jesus, for healing our marriages. Thank you, Jesus, for healing our finances. Thank you, Jesus, for showing us your mercies. And indeed, your mercies are new every morning. And steadfast is your love, O oh Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Let us stay in your love. Let us stay in your mercy. Let our family stay in your mercy. Let our dear children stay in your mercy, O oh Lord. Let our wives, so oh dear Lord, stay in your mercy. Let the unborn in the wombs of our wives, in the wombs of, our, of the, all the women in this world, stay in your mercy. Let all the expectant mothers stay in your mercy. Let the unborn children stay in your mercy. Let those children who have been born to this world stay in your mercy and be protected from the evil one. Let the youth in schools, in the campuses, who are being swayed by the devil and, and misled by the devil, to expose their bodies in such a, a bad way, expose their bodies indecently. Those who are who, who exposing their bodies through wrong fashions, oh dear God, let them remain in your mercy. Have mercy on them. Have mercy on the whole world. Have mercy on the whole world because of the coronavirus the pandemic, Lord. We seek mercy from you, Lord. When you show us the mercy, your mercy, everything can turn around for good, Lord. Lord, we believe that in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, you are able to bring good out of evil. Lord, even the evil that is happening in my life, in my family, the evil that is happening in my country, in the whole world, you can bring good out of it, Lord. We surrender all to your mercy, Jesus. We surrender all to your mercy, Jesus. My dear brother, now we need to surrender all to the mercy of the Lord. Tell Jesus, I surrender all to your mercy as you put your hands up. Tell Jesus, I surrender all to your mercy. I surrender all to your mercy. I surrender to your mercy. I surrender to your mercy. If you have the song, or you know it, oh, I surrender. I surrender. That song that moves like that, you can sing it. I surrender all to Jesus. You can sing it from wherever you are watching from. You can pray it in your computer, in your phone, and complete surrender as you listen to that song as you sing it. And I know you have been healed. And I know one time when I come here again, individually, I may come with one or two people. By God's grace, if you provide for this ministry, you may come with two people who can praise and worship. But as we pray for you, there is worship, there is all this wonderful experience. Thank you, Lord, that you are surrendering now everything to your mercy. We want to surrender our past lives to your mercy because you are the God of the past. Tell Jesus, I surrender my past life to your mercy because you are the God of the past. My loving Jesus, I surrender my present to your mercy because you are the God of the present. My loving Jesus, I surrender my future to your mercy because you are the God of tomorrow. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you, divine mercy. Jesus, thank you, Lord. I praise you and I worship you. May the Lord continue to stay with you. May the Lord continue to bless your lives. May Jesus of mercy continue to stay with us and show us his mercy. And show the whole world his mercy because he cares for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity. We know that once again we shall be able to come to this holy ground. Many of your children will come here as we have been always coming. We are sorry for always taking 
your grace in vain. We are sorry for always coming here and wasting your grace when we have gone back home. Oh Jesus, we promise that when we come back, when you give us another opportunity, we are not going to waste your grace anymore. Help us to keep your grace so that next time when we come by your grace, we shall keep that grace. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus.